Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Hopefully this is looking good. I'm just gonna double check that we are, I can see your comments and we are going to get started. I have a brief window while uh, hubby and kiddo are at lacrosse before things get crazy. Um, so let's get this on the road. Hello, Casey. Okay, good. So people are here. Let's turn down the volume. Okay. Is that out of focus? What's going on there? Nope, we're good. Okay, we are going to uh, make this card and if we have time, we are going to make, hello Lynn, um, something else. So this is a card that I, have, I had done for my bingo. I think I did this for my bingo. Now, I did not create this design myself, I cased it. And I wrote down uh, who, so I could tell you. And now, like always, I've put that piece of paper somewhere and I can't find it. Uh, just stamping something. Oh my gosh. I swear to God. I'm organized and then I move things around and then that's it. So I will be sure to post it underneath. We're not gonna waste any more time looking for it, but just so you know, this is not my original design. I uh, got it from someone else and I will share that information when I can find it. But it's very clever and it's using the amazing, amazing uh, Fine Art Floral DSP. This DSP is still available until the end of June. Um, it's lovely. So, this is like, what did she call it? She called it like a puzzle card. So it's really quite clever and it's super quick, you're gonna see. So I've already done the cutting just so we weren't gonna have to be mucking around with that. You can see that this card I created in uh, terracotta tile and this one we're gonna do today is in Rococo Rose. So of course these are retiring colors and unfortunately um, I believe it's all sold out already with Stampin' Up! So if you loved these colors and you didn't grab them, they are um, unfortunately unavailable now and I don't have very much cardstock left I will likely be selling my all my ink pads and my reinkers so those will be available um, but that's that's where we're at okay so your card base is the long way so 11 by four and a quarter and scored at five and a half so that is going to be your card front okay so you could choose um, any of the papers in this set or any other paper really, that would be gorgeous. And you could have backed this with any of these. So Bumblebee or Rich Razzleberry, I think that is. Um, like I did in the other one, the Terracotta Tile. Is it Rich Razzleberry? Mm, Mary Merlot? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, this piece here is three and a half by Four and a half and now we are going to cut this into four pieces okay so three and a half by four and a half let's get our math right three and a half by four and a half okay so if this is our four and a half we want two and a quarter yes <laughs> four and a half two and a quarter okay and then this side was three and a half so we want one and three quarters. Yes, yes, okay, one and three quarters, and we are gonna do the same here, one and three quarters. All right, so now we have those four little pieces. Same thing, now this piece is a quarter smaller, quarter of an inch smaller all around. Hello, Wendy. Um, so we are at three and a quarter, and four and a quarter. So four and a quarter is gonna give us two and an eighth. So we're gonna cut that at two and an eighth. That does not look like two and an eighth, so let's make sure we're gonna do this accurately. Oh, that's because that's a three and a half. Ha ha. See people? Measure twice, cut once. So this way will be our two and an eighth. That would have been a disaster. Okay, two and an eighth. Then this is going to be our three and a quarter. So one and a half gets us three. So we need one and a half and then one more eighth. Do you 
you like my math there? <laughs> All right. And then we got to make sure we put this puzzle back together properly. That's the only thing that has to happen now. What did I say? One and a half and an eighth. Okay. So there's our four pieces and now we're going to have to do our puzzle. So we're going to bring this back and we're just going to make sure that we're actually putting this back together like it, it belongs. Because if we're not, then that's going to look funny. So it is going to go like that and it goes like that. Okay. So that is our puzzle back together. So these three pieces are going to go on your card front and this one is going to go inside. So we have two pieces of basic white, whisper white, whatever white you're still using, cut four by five and a quarter. Okay. It's cut the same for front and back. I am going to suggest to you that you want to stamp before you glue your pieces in case you muck it up and you need to turn it over. So this one's going to go inside. This guy's going to go inside. So I've kind of put those off to the side inside. These ones are going to go on the front. So we can adhere these bits. So I had my snail down here. Where did I put it? Here it is. Not my snail, my seal. You know what I meant. Sometimes I still revert back to those old names. Okay. So let's just quickly pop these pieces together. So Wendy, I think you've made this card, right? You were at bingo, I think. So this won't be very exciting to you. Um, so just center this guy on this little rectangle. And so you're going to see like a, how easy this this card is and really how quick it is. So if you have DSP that you love or you're like, eh, I just want to use it up. This is a great way to do it and quickly make a bunch of really pretty cards. So these are perfect Mother's Day cards. I'm going to put a greeting on them that doesn't specifically say Happy Mother's Day on the outside so that if I don't get people purchasing from them, them from me or they don't, yeah, I don't get them used, then I can use them for something else and then we can stamp Happy Mother's Day inside. Okay, so on the front of our card, these just kind of get evenly spaced. So I'm gonna lay these out so I know roughly where they're gonna go and I want them sort of spaced evenly top to bottom. Oh, that's great, I'm glad you're using this design lots. I actually haven't used it since, but I had cut, when I was prepping for the bingo, I cut the piece in the wrong color. So now I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna have to make that card again. Okay. So that's how I'm going to want to adhere those pieces on. I'm happy with how I have those spaced. So now I'm going to stamp my greeting in the corner. And so I'm going to use the same greeting that I used before. Of course, you could use anything. And that is from this You Are Amazing stamp set, which again is still available until the end of June. So I'm not really focusing on anything that's about to retire right now because... I'm finding that anyone who is one of my customers, you're not interested anymore. You're not buying those things. So let's focus on stuff we can still get. I'm gonna use the Rococo Rose ink. You could use any of these other colors, but also look stunning. So I'm gonna ink up my You Are Amazing. And if I look at my original card, I pretty much stamped that straight on in this space. So I'm just gonna kind of find the spot center and stamp. Okay, beautiful, love it. Um, but like I said, stamp that first because that way if you muck it up, you can turn it over or you could even spin it around and then you would probably end up covering it with one of your other little squares. But if you glue everything on and then you muck it up, well, then you can't really go back from there, can you? So now, um, so you can see what we do on the inside. And then you would still have, I can still do the Happy Mother's Day and someone can still write their message. Um, additionally, I could make a bunch of these and not stamp anything here, but this is, this is how we roll. Um, there is no dimensionals used on this card. You could choose to pop these up if you wanted to, um, but I did not. And I think sometimes it's just nice to make a card that's not 
full of layers, keeps it pretty simple, keeps your costs down with respect to the supplies that you need um, or you might have. Makes it quick. This is the kind of card you could prep a bunch of and then just be like mindlessly putting them together. For me, this would be a great like movie night card. This would be a great card for me to take um, to lacrosse practice when I have to go and sit in the car um, because this is something I could easily do just using like a book or something as my table and just putting it all together. So those are just gonna go on there like that. This is gonna go on the front um, it's really, like I said, simple. You could add ribbon, you could add to all sorts of things, but keeping in mind that the more we add for someone who is not an avid crafter, it's just more things that they feel like they need to have and they don't have. And so then maybe you don't even start at all. So we don't have to have lots of things here. This is one pack of cardstock, a pack of DSP, white cardstock, because really you can't be a card maker without white cardstock. And um, an ink pad, one stamp set. And we're gonna use an embellishment, but again, not the end of the world if you didn't. All right, putting that one on. Then this one's gonna go, oh, we're about to run out of, okay. About to run out. Whew, it's my last one. I thought I didn't have another one. It's a good thing I'll be placing an order when the catalog goes live because I'm clearly going to need uh, some more adhesive. Oh, well, thank you, Janet. I'm glad, I would love to see. So if you guys go away and you make this card and you use up what you think is some of your prettiest DSP, I would love to see it. I always encourage you to share your um, designs back underneath the video if you Go ahead and make something that's been inspired by what you see me making. Okay, so we want to kind of line this up. It doesn't really matter. You can kind of see how it's got to go. So you could kind of hold this over top if you want and kind of get a sense. You don't have to by any means. I know it's just going to roughly go in this corner. I can sort of see how much space I've left. I'm just going to sort of space it out like that. And then there you go. Bob's your uncle. In my case, Bill is my uncle, but you know, either or. And boom, just like that, we're done. So this card took us, admittedly, I had done some of the cutting, but not all. We started at 710. My clock tells me it's 723. So we made this card in less than 15 minutes. We are going to put a couple of those beautiful opal rounds on it. These are delightful and I believe, let me double check, I think these are carrying over into the new catalog. Casey, do you remember? Are they in the new catalog? Or anyone else who's looked in the new catalog? Opal rounds. Yep, they are. Because they are so gorgeous. Okay, and I just used all small ones. I put two over here. And one up here. Okay, this paper is beautiful. And so again, you guys, this is one of these things like we get these papers, we think they're so gorgeous, we save them, we save them, we save them. And then, you know, you come back and you're like, Oh my God, what was I saving this for? Why didn't I make cards with this? So now what I can do on the inside is stamp Happy Mother's Day. I might actually use these for my own, my mom and my mother-in-law. So I might not stamp anything. I'll just write Happy Mother's Day inside. But often when people purchase a card, they sort of expect that it's gonna say Happy Mother's Day. Okay, that is card number one. So I just, I'm gonna quickly show you another one. So again, I saw this card on um, Stampin' Pretty on her Facebook page and she, I think, was sharing it from somebody else. But I wanted to share it Again, quick, easy, same DSP. It's this gorgeous DSP. So you could use so many of the patterns. And then it's the ornate layers dies. So these dies are carrying over. The ornate borders was retiring. 
And then all she did was take this biggest die, which is essentially your card front, okay? And she die cut this and made it a card front. So I'm looking at this and thinking, well, if I die cut it this way and this way, I can get two cards versus if I go like this, I mean, I can still get two cards this way. They're just two very different cards. Well, and then I can get a strip. So maybe we will still do it that way. Okay, so we are gonna run it through the um, through our Big Shot or your Stamping Cut and Emboss, whichever machine you happen to have. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on there. I want it pretty much in this corner. So I'm trying to decide. I kind of like, I might actually go this corner because I like that we have a few more options with what other, what background color, because I have an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna just take this off camera for a second. So, hang tight, don't leave me. You're gonna hear it going through the big shot. All right, bring it back. Okay, so here's our beautiful piece. You can see we're gonna need to pop all those little pieces out. Um, so if you have your brush that goes on your take a pick tool, I have yet to buy that because I have this old one. So, but if you don't have either and you own the take a pick tool, then you want the little die brush, right? Cause it gets all those little guys out in no time. And if you miss a couple, then that's when you actually use just your take a pick tool. Or if you're sitting upstairs having a movie night and you don't want to get everyone to stop the movie, you use a toothpick. But I'm going to tell you that your take a pick tool is easier. So just get those last guys out. So you can see how many options we have for um, what color DSP to place this on. We have the terracotta, we have the Rococo Rose, we have this mossy meadow. We have, this is pool party, I believe, and then this might be pretty peacock. So I'm actually thinking uh, pretty peacock because as we know, that color is also retiring. Having said that, I love pretty peacock and I still have some holiday paper, so I might save the pretty peacock, but let's take a look. It might actually be a bit too bold. Now, what I saw with this card she then embossed this piece of paper and tied some of the mossy meadow um, braided linen. So we're gonna do the same. I'm actually pretty much casing these as is, which is generally not my style. I usually like to change them a little bit, but sometimes when they're just gorgeous, why mess, why mess with it? So of course our, our Settles embossing folder, which might've been my go-to, that's retiring folks. You, I, you won't be able to get it. Um, I won't be able to get it for you. So I'm trying to switch over. I love this folder anyway. This is the tasteful textile 3D embossing folder. So it is the next closest thing to the subtle embossing folder. And we're just gonna put our piece of paper in there, okay? So we're gonna run that through the machine again. So again, bear with me. I'm still here, just off to the side. By the time I carry my die cutting machine over, it's just a big pain in the bottom. Is this a 3D? Yes, of course. I really need to label my dies. I don't know about you guys. Do you label um, or like put a sticker or do something so that it makes it totally obvious to you when they are the 3D folders? I should do that. And where I should do it is like right on the folder, obviously. Put a big thing that says 3D. Okay. So now we have embossed this. And you know what this is reminding me of? So I don't know if, if it's reminding you of it. Do you remember when you were a kid and you used to collect pretty flowers? Pansies come to mind. And you would stick them in the pages of books, right? And you would dry them, you would press them, and then you would glue them on things or you would make bookmarks or whatever. Doesn't that kind of remind you of that, right? So pretty. Okay, so the card I saw they had used some of this and tied it around there, um, which is lovely. I kind of like the, I, this is a little bit, but it kind of blends in too much. So the ribbon that actually goes with this is this gold ribbon. 
This, however, would also look really pretty. I think I may do that. Okay, so this ribbon was is in the mini, the June to July mini um, metallic ribbon. So that is pretty. So let's use that. And then what color? So I guess we should kind of keep with that. So I think that's Blushing Bride. So let's quickly just put this together. Um, petal pink. Flirty Flamingo. Flirty Flamingo seems a bit rough for my liking right now. Let's go with Petal Pink. My desk space here is uh, just shrinking as we speak. So that would be that. Eh, I don't really like that. So what happens if we do that? Okay, that's better. I like that better. Okay, so we're going to use that. We're gonna go the long way again. We don't have to, depends how you wanna tie your ribbon. If you wanna tie your ribbon around the entire card or if you just wanna tie it around the DFP. So we could tie it around the entire card or we can tie it just around the DSP. Also depends sometimes how much ribbon you have, if you're worried about, um, you know, using it all up, that kind of thing. We could also use the other side of the ribbon, not the sparkly side, but I'm okay with the sparkly side. Although, okay, so we're gonna have to go like this, otherwise you won't see it. Okay, I don't know how you guys do this. This is how I kind of, I don't cut ribbon. I keep it like this. And then that way I hopefully waste less of it. So if we want to tie a bow here, what we're going to do is come across and then we have to flip. See how I'm going to flip this so that we get a nice flat bit here. Right? And then it depends. So if you really want, I'm, I'm purposely not going to make it so we have the glittery bit. And this just allows us to kind of have both sides of this gorgeous ribbon. So you kind of got to get creative, which you can see my twist didn't actually work there. But you have to twist mid bow tie. There we go. So that we get the other side. All right, perfect. And then what I'm thinking, so sometimes you gotta just, you know, fluff up those bits. There's a lot of bits going on here, hey? <laughs> and sometimes I find if you cannot get your bow or your knot or whatever it is to really cooperate, you can always use a glue dot and that will hold it in place. Because what I'm trying to do is make that one side smaller, but every time I do that, I'm losing the tightness. All right, now I got this side too big. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So for all of you who also struggle with bows, uh, don't worry about it. You are not alone. All right, so we're gonna do that. Now, of course, we need a greeting on this one. We just can't have it like that. So, I'm liking this one. It is retiring though. And I kind of want something that's gonna be in a circle. I might actually I think I like want this over here. See, I might actually see, it would have looked nice that way. Okay, that doesn't matter. Stick with the program. So we can still move that bow wherever we want it, deciding. Um, I really like this saying, but uh, we are not a, I didn't grow up in a faith-based house, so that is not really a card that I would give to my mom. Um, 
This would be a nice one, but I don't know. That's not, what else could we use in there? Mm, this might be nice. Um, we could just do this, this love you most. And then again, you could do happy mother's day inside. I haven't even used this stamp. And this was the host set. Tell me this wasn't the host set in the annual catalog. Probably was. Yep, totally. Okay, so this set's about to retire and I haven't even used this stamp ever. Oh, goodness. Anyone else? Who else has that? Who else has that problem? Okay, let's actually maybe use this one. So grateful for someone like you in my life. And then you could totally have, you know, happy Mother's Day inside. At least I've used this stamp. It's retiring as well, don't get me wrong. And then what I was thinking we would use is the, the circle from the poppy dies. So not this one, not the poppy moments. The other dies, which I can never remember what they're called. Painted labels. Okay, these guys. This. So, we'll use this guy and we'll do that in the middle. Love it. Okay, now I kind of want to bring in one of the other colors. So, I'm tempted to bring in. Um, the So Saffron, because it's just a really beautiful pale yellow. But sometimes I think these things are going to look nice, and then they don't look as nice as I think they will. But let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. I've got a scrap here. Let's die cut it. If we don't like it, we'll just go with Whisper White, obviously. Or not Whisper White, basically. You know what I mean. White. Whatever white you're using. Or, I have another idea. What are people thinking? The other thing we could do is use a piece of basic white and use our blending brushes and blend a bit of the saffron on it. But again, I know not everybody has those. So I'm trying to be mindful of the fact that, you know, not everyone can have everything. You gotta be careful getting this guy out. Okay. You know what, I don't mind that. Now it's just gonna be what color ink we're gonna use. Ugh. Okay, sitting down. Settling down. Get that piece out, be gentle. Got it. So if this is the card front and then this, so I'm gonna do something. You guys are gonna be like, oh my God, you spent so much time tying that bow. I know, I know. But I'm going to slide it under. And then I'm gonna slide it back out like that. Okay, so the, what color ink are we gonna use? Hmm, anyone? Bumblebee maybe? We'll show up on there a little bit. Again, so sometimes when I can't really decide, I take out my markers. So if we were to stamp in Bumblebee, it would look like that, which I don't know if I love. 
if we were to stamp in so saffron so the same color it will look like that you could just stamp in crumb cake that might look nice when in doubt right another neutral What do you guys think? Should we stamp tone on tone or will that blend in too much? Or should we go with like the crumb cake? Or smoky slate. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for someone to weigh in. What are your thoughts? What's an opinion? We'll get this quick card finished. It didn't turn out to be quite as quick. I wasn't organized. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? The brown crumb cake. Okay, Casey says crumb cake. What does anyone else say? It's crumb cake, Casey. It's okay. That's what the brown is. Anyone else? Well, you know what? Let's give it a whirl. I think I actually have crumb cake on my desk at the moment. We'll see what that looks like. Knight of Navy. Ooh, that would be bold. Which wouldn't be terrible, but I think because we've got these subtle pinks, Knight of Navy would look lovely on the saffron, don't get me wrong. But I don't think that is... So let's try this if we need it. We'll die cut another piece. Yeah, that looks all right. The darker pink. Oh, well, hello, Jan West. The darker pink. Yeah, you know what? That would look pretty too. But we've done this one. So we're going to go with this for now. We could turn it over, but then you don't see the stitching as well. <laughs> this is the beauty. I have more of this paper. So we can um, do something different the next time. So I know this is not how I did this before, but this might be fun. I'll come in and then go down. Just, you know, a little something extra, a little something different for a ribbon. And it's gonna come out the back. You know, kind of like a ribbon slide. Okay. And then it's going to come around. So I know a lot of people, when they definitely want something to stay in place, they tack it down. So whether they tack it down with a bit of adhesive, they tack it down with a glue dot, um, whatever you decide. So I might actually now, instead of a bow, I think I'm going to do a knot. So you're still going to do a similar thing with the knot. You're going to turn your ribbon. Then you're gonna put your finger, your scissors, whatever. Of course, now we have too much ribbon because I cut enough ribbon for us to do a bow, but that's okay. And then you're just going to pull one, which is gonna keep us with our nice big fat middle. I'm gonna take my big fat finger out of there. So you can see we have our nice, lovely, big fat middle. And then we can pull the other one. I'm not gonna lie, this ribbon is a little bit finicky to work with. I think because it's got the metallic in it. I don't know, has anyone else had this experience with this ribbon? So now I've actually changed my mind again. Oh my god are you guys like seriously let me tell you this Wednesdays are the end of my work week and um, sometimes by the end of my work week I'm a little bit frazzled I'm not gonna lie so we're gonna go back to the bow
There we go. Okay, yep. I'm good with that. I suck at tying the, yeah, well, trust me. It has taken me years of practice to sort of be able to tie a bow nicely. Okay, I'm, I'm liking that. So I would think that we should stick a couple dimensionals behind there. Um, so let's find a pack that's open. And then we will wrap this up. So this card, you know, wasn't super quick because I didn't have it all mapped out, but you can see now that we've put it together that the elements are simple. And so if you just wanted to go ahead now and create your own version of this, um, it's really just a piece of DSP cut with that die or any sort of big die that you have, um, emboss it just to sort of give it a different, a different look which I think is actually really pretty on this. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of those dried flower petals. I might actually use um, dimensionals on this piece as well. I think that might be pretty. So we used no dimensionals on the last card and now we are dimensional crazy on this card, which is all good. Okay, and then voila, that would go on there like that. So, you know, I think that's really pretty. This is gonna be sort of a go-to die. You're gonna see, I think, a lot of demonstrators using now because those stitch shapes are um, gone. So again, this would be perfect for someone who wants this as a Mother's Day card. I can easily stamp inside, Happy Mother's Day. Um, and then if nobody wants a Mother's Day card from me and I don't end up using this, then I can easily keep this for someone else and use it as a thank you or just, you know, just send in a card to someone because, you know, COVID stinks and it'd be nice to cheer them up. So there we have it, friends. Thank you for joining me. It was a little bit longer overall than I was hoping, but I'm glad you stuck it out. Just a couple quick designs there. I had one other idea. Oh, that's right. So maybe I'll try to get on again tomorrow to show the other idea that I had, another quick idea with DSP. All right, thanks everyone, have a fabulous night. Oh, and be sure to share your samples if you make um, something, one of these cards.